Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mono Green, a Stompy, an aggressive creature curve out deck that got quite a few upgrades in the most recent expansion, including four copies of Sharp Eyed Rookie, a 2 mana 2 2 with Vigilance, a very relevant keyword in a format where the Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures, and then whenever we play a bigger creature than the Rookie, either in power or toughness, it picks up a plus one plus one counter and we generate a clue token so that we can also sacrifice later in the game to hopefully find more action. And then we also have the full set of Flourishing Bloomkin, which is why we have 24 forests in our mana base. So the Bloomkin gets plus one plus one for each forest we control, starts out as a 2-2, but will gradually grow over time. So even in the late game we can still cast it for two mana, and it will often be the biggest creature on the battlefield, so it's perfect for growing our Sharp-Eyed Rookie. We also have two copies of the Beast Caller, which is pretty similar to the Rookie, doesn't have Vigilance or Generate Clue tokens, but it can maybe move its plus one counters if it dies, although if we're being honest, most most of our creatures are getting exiled nowadays. And then at a one mana we also have the full set of Evolving Adaptive, which works with oil counters instead of plus one counters, but essentially works in the same way as our two drops, as it will grow when we play a larger creature. And then to round out our one mana creatures, we also have two copies of the pack leader, just as an extra way to apply a bit of early pressure, and this can also maybe grow as we cast our four drops. And then our one mana removal spell of choice is now hard hitting question, playing this over Tail Swipe. Tail Swipe has the advantage of being an instant, but it does actually fight the two creatures, so we also damage our own creature, making it more difficult to maybe set up an attack. Whereas hard hitting question is a sorcery, but it can also hit opposing planeswalkers and doesn't actually fight. So it's a pretty close call between the two, but I've been pretty happy with hard hitting question. And then at 3 mana, we continue our curve with Sentinel of the Nameless City, which I'm playing over Bloated Contaminator. Once again, Vigilance is pretty important, and then Sentinel also provides immediate value when it enters by making a map token, and can make even more as we keep attacking. And then those map tokens can also maybe turn into extra plus one counters, which will then synergize with our two copies of Kodama, which is perfect here, as most of the early creatures in our deck will pick up some sort of counter, which counts as a modification, so now if they hit the Opponent, we get to search up an extra forest, which also grows our Bloomkin that we might play, and we also gain Trample on all those modified creatures, so there's plenty of synergy throughout. And then another new addition is Archdruid's Charm, which gives us an instant speed removal spell that also gives us a plus one plus one counter. So if the opponent isn't careful, we can set up quite the blowout where we not only grow a creature, but also take out a different creature. So it can be quite powerful if cast at the right time. And then also has the flexibility of maybe taking out an artifact or enchantment, or occasionally searching up a creature if we top deck it on an empty board. And then we have two copies of Polychronos, another payoff for being a mono green deck as a nice 4-5. So another great way to grow our earlier creatures. And then we can even transform it into a 6-6 six, six with reach and life link if we just pay 6 mana and 2 life. And then at 4 mana we've got a full set of Axe, Bane, Ferox, a 4-4 with Death Touch, Haste and Ward, forcing the opponent to collect Evidence 4. So especially if we're playing this on curve, the opponent's graveyard's unlikely to be very full, so then they're gonna have a hard time removing the Ferox. And then we're playing this over Ulvenwald Oddity, just because a 4-4 Death Touch can actually attack into Shield Root as a 4-5, whereas Ulvenwald Oddity does not. And then of course the Ward can also help out. But there are certainly situations where Ulvenwald Oddity could shine, especially if we manage to ramp using Kodama, then we can sink all that extra mana into transforming the Oddity, but for now I've been pretty happy with the Ferox. And then another 4-drop is a Doomscar, a warrior, which also kind of ties into our plus one counter theme with Kodama, and then can also provide additional card advantage, especially if we already have some creatures ready to attack. And then a 4-3 Trample can also maybe run away with the game if it can connect a few times, finding additional creatures. And then the mana base is just 24 basic forests, no Boseju, and not playing any creature lands like Mishra's Foundry since we have the Bloomkin and we also need triple green for Charm and Polychronos so having any colorless lands can also get pretty awkward. And uh, yeah, there's other cards we could certainly consider in this archetype. If we maybe plan to ramp a little bit more, then Nissa becomes pretty appealing, as it's another payoff for having lots of forests in our mana base. And maybe in the grindier matchups where we expect to face a lot of removal or against control, I could see Nissa being worth it. But for now, we're excluding it out of the main deck since we're trying to keep the curve nice and low. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Keepable Hand, a little heavy on the lands perhaps, but that will help grow the Bloomkin. Let's see what we're up against. A red aggro perhaps, turn one Kumano. Well, this will be their best chance to take out the Bloomkin. 
Pulchronos can also gain us some life if we end up transforming it, which could help against the red. So play our land, attack. If they try to lightning strike, we could Archdruid's Charm to put a counter on it. Otherwise, I'm happy to play Polychronos here. Nothing end of turn is surprising, so opponent must have a lot of 3 drops in hand. Maybe some pump spells like Monstrous Rage, which would still trade for Polychronos here, so I'll take it. Or maybe a Witchstalker Frenzy, alright, that's a good one too. Found Kodama. So if I play Kodama, it doesn't net me an extra land right away. If they have another Frenzy in hand, I could see the benefit of keeping up Archroot's Charm. But it does put an extra threat on the battlefield. I think I should try and protect the Bloomkin if possible. So I'll just hit for four. Although I guess this uh, does deal five damage, so even with a counter, it wouldn't save it necessarily. Alright, fine, I'll just play Kodama then. And then with a counter we can modify one of our creatures for next turn. There's Godric. And can maybe attack and still cast a Monstrous Rage. So if I put Kodama in front of Etching, we still trade, at the very least. And then we can use Charm to take out Godric, and then this will be bigger than a 5-5, so it doesn't die to the Frenzy. That seems like a reasonable exchange. If they just use a play with fire to finish it off, that's also acceptable. So the trade happens. Godric flies for a turn. And we'll just do this now to be safe. So they can't Frenzy in response. Hit for six, so next turn Bloomkin is presenting lethal. And this Foundry attack implies another monstrous rage. So even if they rage plus play with fire, it's not lethal, so I'll just take it. Maybe it was still worth blocking just because that makes it harder for them to play a chum blocker second main. Potent cast it anyway, and a Ferox will make it easy. Grow the pack leader, attack. I guess if we want to play around Frenzy, we only attack with two creatures here, but it doesn't matter. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Get to start with our one drop. Against what looks like blue-white control, so the card advantage from a rookie could also help out. So we've got a nice 1-2-3 curve. Although on the draw, opponent's got plenty of ways to mess with it. Still fine to play Rookie. And then any of our creatures next turn are likely to grow the team. Opponent did uses. Could see temporary lockdown at some point as well. So that kind of favors playing Sentinel over Bloomkin. Bloomkin also makes it easier to double spell later. Although we could also go Adaptive plus another Rookie. Just might be overextending into a Sweeper a little bit much, whereas Sentinel gives us more options by exploring. So play Sentinel, see if it resolves. May just get countered as well. That resolves. So we get a map token and a clue token. Hit for six. And then a Vigilance on both of these can also be relevant if we expect a Wandering Emperor next turn. It's going to be an Aiganjo instead, taking out a Rookie. Still got some value. And then now we have to kind of expect a Wandering Emperor. So they get a chance to exile the Adaptive. And we have to decide how much we want to commit to the board. So this is also a turn where they can next turn maybe cast a Sunfall after drawing some cards. So I think Adaptive attacks. Question is, what else do we want to play? Maybe start by attacking. If they Wandering Emperor, then I can play more creatures second main. If they don't Wandering Emperor, then uh, we're probably looking to use some of our artifacts. 
I'm gonna start by attacking. Alright, they do have Wandering Emperor, so they get to exile the Adaptive, and then now I'm more willing to commit more creatures to the board. And then question is which ones? Probably want to make it Bloomkin as one of them, so we can immediately trigger a card like Rookie. Sure. And another Vigilant creature to the board. And hope they don't have a board wipe. Put on main phasing Deluge to hit their land drop. So now a Sweeper is more likely next turn. One's just gonna make a chum blocker to buy them some time. So yeah, we're not gonna wanna commit more creatures to the board. This is where we start cashing in some of our artifacts, especially Farewell is their sweeper of choice, which can exile them as well. Play a land, and then I guess we'll uh, use a map token twice and sack a clue, and then grow some of our three part creatures. Hit a land. Bloomkin is fine. Attack all out. Bone and Shum's Bloomkin. Take seven. And then I guess we can draw with a clue and then still sack the map. Since I would rather just draw land now instead of get another plus one counter if we're gonna lose our creatures anyway. Alright, that worked out. So we got our value, but question is can we now beat a sweeper, sunfall, exiles everything. Would love to draw some haste creatures. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to get back on the board. Can play double adaptive, play beast caller and bloomkin. Hope they don't have a second sweeper pretty much. Could also sack the clue, hope to draw our hasty Axe Bane, which would be a decent play here. Yeah, I think we're probably going to lose to a second sweeper regardless, so I'm not going to play around it. Alright, let's see what you've got. Another Sunfall. Yeah, that's too bad. So now we can draw. Find Pack Leader. But I think we're just too far behind now. Holding one of our creatures back, of course, would have worked out better. But if they don't have another Sunfall, I want to make sure we actually apply the most pressure possible. Turns out our opponent had Sweepers for days. Which is a good way to beat a mono green deck, as it turns out. And we don't have the luxury of a creature land to deal with the last points, since we want to maximize our forests for the Bloomkin. So, we're basically dead, but it's gonna take about 10 more turns for the opponent to actually win the game. So we'll start with Sentinel. Can explore onto Kodama. Which likely gets answered by Wandering Emperor. Another Sentinel's fine, can attack, trade for one of their tokens at the very least. But there's Emperor. Exile Kodama. Next turn plays Sentinel, hope to make this a 4 5 so it can maybe attack past a 4 4. But opponent's so far ahead on resources now after getting a 3 4 1 and a 4 4 1. And this is definitely one of the weaknesses of green aggro decks. Unlike a deck like Mono Red or Boros, which can maybe burn the opponent out if you get them low enough, Mono Green needs to actually connect with its creatures, which is a bit harder against a control deck. But yeah, good to showcase the weaknesses of the deck as well. Lucranos would be fine, but I don't think it's going to win us the game. Even if we transform it. 
Yeah, if we had the luxury of playing a little slower, then we want to make sure to maybe disguise the Bloomkin before just uh, casting it. That way we can maybe generate a bit more value, put more forests in play. Doomscar Warrior would be a fine draw, although I'm sure we're going to see another board wipe soon, as our opponent didn't seem interested in blocking. Another Sunfall. So now the Doomscar doesn't look quite as good. Having more hasty 4-drops like uh, Olvenwald Oddity would be a little better against Control. Can pay for their conditional counterspell. No more lies, which I'm sure they have in hand now. But uh, yeah, opponents stabilize the board. They can start turning on the incubators and take it from there, basically. But uh, yeah, as we all know, can take a while when playing against Control. Do they have another Wandering Emperor? Probably. Or they can just double block. Sadly, this is a sorcery, so we can blow them out. Archboot's charm would have been better here. All right, I'll give it one or two more turns here. But uh, they should be able to close it out pretty quickly. Flashback Deluge can see the rest of their deck pretty much. We're at 13. Forest's not going to do it. They had the Wandering Emperor as well. At least we have more Vigilant creatures than we used to have. So that does help against Emperor, Sentinel being one of them, and the Sharp-Eyed Rookie as well. If you're playing something like a Bloated Contaminator at 3, it's going to line up a lot worse against the Wandering Emperor. So that's also one of the card choices you have to make when building Mono Green. And there's a Sentinel. can play it, maybe grow it with a map token before taking out a 4-4. But her opponent's got a protocol to counter it. All right, GG's. Opponent gets to close out the game in a timely fashion, at least. That's where Sunfall can also be pretty effective. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, Fine Hand. Especially if we can hit our land drops. This turn 3 Kodama can grow both our 1 and 2 drop. Opponent on mono black caves, perhaps? So can definitely expect some spot removal early on. But hopefully we get to connect with at least one creature after playing Kodama. So we kind of get the ball rolling. Go for the throw, deals with our adaptive. So this could just be a scry land as kind of a colorless source in a mono black deck, or it could be a more dedicated cave deck, not quite sure. Urza's Silex, well, they are playing white as well apparently. Good window for Kodama. Make a clue, get a forest. And then if they present a creature, we can maybe take it out. Revelry will gain them some life back. At least a rookie has Trample. So next turn they can blow up the Silex, potentially. Question is, how much do we want to commit to the board here? So... This also destroys our clue tokens, is good to keep in mind. Maybe we... Play Sentinel to trigger Rookie once more, although does that really matter? I guess not so much. The Ferox itself doesn't trample, so that's not a great play here in the face of the 1-1s. One so maybe play Sentinel, attack, could even try to give Kodama trample. Yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea. We do miss out on a card draw from the clue, or both clues actually. Assuming they can activate Silex next turn. But we would get maybe an extra land and an extra point of damage. I guess I prefer the card at that point. So 
So opponent soaking up as much damage as possible certainly implies that a sweeper's incoming. So we'll just pass and uh, draw with our clue token end of turn. And then we can follow up with Rookie and Ferox. Another Ferox isn't bad. And a Bloomkin. So we'll stick to the plan. If they play a Planeswalker, we can also ask it some hard-hitting questions. Opponent can collect evidence for, if needed. So, yeah, I'm not hating another Ferox here to keep up the pressure. Not sure yet if I want to commit another Bloomkin to the board. Would grow the Rookie once again. Hope they don't have a farewell to exile my artifacts. Maybe we start by attacking and see what happens. Opponent takes it all, down to two. Well, at that point I think we just pass and draw a card end of turn. And then expect a board wipe and we can get back on the board with double Bloomkin. Another Silex does not enter tapped so they can activate it right away. Alright, if we top deck another Ferox we could win. And Doomscar Warrior could give Trample. Are we maybe interested in disguising the Bloomkins? Make it harder for them to interact with? That could be reasonable, could play both. And then next turn either disguise or maybe play a Doomscar Warrior. If our opponent plays another Sunset Revelry, I guess I would want to be able to kill them. So then we both need to transform it and be able to give trample, so maybe we play one face up and one face down. Alright, hopefully they're out of sweepers. So once again up to seven lands so they could play and activate Silex. It's going to be a breach to multiverse instead. Hitting Vraska, Sorin, those are all beatable. And then Bloomkin's not going to be great on the opponent's side of the battlefield. So probably get a Ferox. So we should be alright to win the game next turn. Goes for Sorin, make a vampire. You can deal with my servant. I'm busy. So we can do a few things, but most straightforward. Take out the life linker. And then give our Bloomkin Trample. But an all-out attack here would have done it too. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And missing a couple land drops, perhaps. Two lands and we're basically set. I'll try it. No one drop, so it's not the perfect start. But at least we've got some interaction ready to go. There's a few options in the one mana removal slot. Could also play with Tail Swipe as an instant. The drawback is that it actually fights, so will damage your own creature. And uh, can't hit Planeswalkers up against Monorads. All right. Found Pack Leader a turn late. So we'll still go with the Bloomkin. Can maybe play Pack Leader plus Hard Hitting Question next turn. Ideally just draw a land for Pelucranos. So opponent does have Swiss Spear. Do we see a removal spell? Just an attack. This is a monstrous rage. Alright. So that's an attack for six. Did luckily draw land. So that grows the Bloomkin. Let's us play Pelucranos. Probably keep Bloomkin back on defense to block a 2 2. So even if they monstrous rage, we can trade. Probably not going to block the Swift Spear, since we want to keep Polucronos to set up our hard-hitting question. Something like this. 
It's gonna be an antagonize. Hit us for eight. And a rage as well. Alright, that's an attack for eleven. We're at two. But we do get to take out Swisspear. And hope they don't have any burn spells to close out the game. They might be more on the pump spell variety. I will attack since we have Pack Leader on defense now. Can't quite play Ferox. Can attack all out and maybe just play Polucronos on defense now. Ferox would have done it with a land here. So they get one more top deck. Are we dead? We are not, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, even against kind of the pump spell variety, it seems like Mono Green can hold its ground. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and what do we think of our hand? Could use a couple extra lanes for sure, but it's keepable. Facing Boros. Don't have any Vigilant creatures, which are pretty effective here since we can keep up the pressure while not taking too much damage on the way back. But a few removal spells could maybe deal with Warden of the Inner Sky or uh, a, a Knight Errant, which are their biggest threats. Opponent does have the turn to Demolition, but at least no Convoked Knight Errant. Probably see that next turn. Bloomkin just a 2-2 two -two to start out, so not the biggest roadblock, especially for a Recruiter here. And then next turn I imagine we just play Polychronos. Ooh, case of the Gateway Express is unfortunate, taking out Bloomkin, and they can immediately solve it as well. So that's a pretty big setback. Charm can eventually destroy their enchantments, but for now I just need to put something in the way. And there's Warden, so that's something we'll want to answer. And do they have a Knight Errant as well? Yep, Poner can do a lot of stuff with just two lands on the battlefield. This is a Knight Errant, which if they find a Recruiter, although they might already have one in hand, just missing a land for it. Double Knight Errants found. That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, against Boros, you just need to be off to a quick start and then hopefully have a few removal spells to keep the opponent off balance. In this case, I think we're just too far behind. And Knight Errants, especially this early in the game, is quite effective at not only applying pressure, but also trading for our creatures. So with Axe Bane, we can hit for eight. And then we probably die on the way back. So I'm gonna stick to the Archdruid's Charm, and then for now we can take out a Knight Errant, I suppose. Although playing defense against someone with double Knight Errant in hand is unlikely to work out, since they can just kind of string together more and more creatures. And there's another Knight Errant. Finds Recruiter and Reinforcements. Main phase Reinforcements, so they can use it for Warden. And then... I guess we want to take out the Warden now. As opposed to taking out their case. So next turn we can transform this. For now we get to play Ferox. And hard-hitting question. And then can I afford to attack here? Let's say we take out Knight Errant. Next turn opponent goes Land Recruiter. These all hit for 3, this hits for 4. So 10, 19, so yeah we would be dead on the way back if they have a land. But currently they seem to be missing it. So maybe this is a window to sneak in an attack. Well, the next turn I'm going to want to transform. Cost me two life as well. Then we can start gaining some life back. Opponent most likely trades the two ones for the Ferox, although maybe they don't. And then at 15, I guess we would fall to one, so then I don't have the life to transform Polychronos anymore. Yeah, tough call. 
this is gonna happen no matter what. And then, yeah, I guess we just attack with Polychronos, so I can at least transform it next turn. Our opponent can actually pay for the Collect Evidence, should they have another case of the Gateway Express. It's gonna be another Warden and a Frontliner instead. Convoke Knight Errant number three, at the very least. And then I don't think Polychronos can keep up with the Warden. Well, opponent did have a good hand. They were kind of hampered by missing their land drop. But it's not been too much of an issue since they've had plenty of spells to cast. So I don't think there was any way this hand could have beaten what our opponent's up to here. Too many Knight Errants finding too many blockers. Looks like we will get to transform Polychronos at least. But at this point, a uh, 6-6, six, six, even 7-7 seven, seven lifelink is not going to solve our problems. But I guess it's worth the shots. Opponent can trade and then we'll still get some tokens. They take it. And do we finally see Recruiter? We do. Alright, that's gonna be more than enough here. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good representation of the Boros matchup. And given its popularity, one of the reasons why Monogreen's not that great right now. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and so what do we think of our hand? Missing a couple of lanes, but we've got some decent two drops. No one drop to start out is not ideal. So, yeah, I mean, we both need to draw lanes, and we need to find a one drop ideally, so we can curve out more smoothly. So this hand has a few issues. All right, this is a bit better. We've got one, two, three. Opponent on blue-white control once again. Not our favorite matchup. We'll keep up the pressure for now. And then we may see a board wipe next turn. For now, Union to gain some life. And another one to hit our land drop. Or just to, I guess, gain one more life. So next turn, they're gonna wipe the board. I guess uh, play Doomscar to at least get a card in return. And then next turn Ferox as a decent follow-up. Bones down to 12. And we find another Ferox. So we can play those back to back. And I imagine our opponent's got a board wipe here. Sunfall. Play Ferox and Smash. Our opponent can collect evidence if they have a Wandering Emperor here. Okay, now we can play another Ferox, which likely gets countered. Could also disguise Bloomkin, and then still draw that might line up better against a counter if they just play Wandering Emperor. I mean, I guess they can also just animate the Incubator token so they can answer both copies of Ferox. Yeah, we'll start here. Attack. They're just gonna trade for the Incubator.
May as well draw now in case we find a one drop. Alright. And a deluge end of turn to find more answers. So this is five mana to disguise. If I attack, they can Wandering Emperor and pay the ward. So maybe it's just Ferox attack all out, but then they can ambush my 2-2. Two -two. That's fine. So we'll get our value and probably see a removal spell in response. Another union, all right, not as bad as a Wandering Emperor would have been. Can sack our clue. And another Bloomkin. Start here. I Ganjo channeled. Alright, point is at five. So probably just play Kodama now and then hang on to the Bloomkin until we can disguise and transform it right away. And get this no more lies out of the way as well. Could also just play another Bloomkin. I guess we're kind of asking to get swept up, but maybe that's fine. No, right, opponent flashes back Deluge, so I guess they were out of answers. And double Bloomkin's gonna get it done. March X equals two. Yeah, that's a one mana answer, but they need two of those. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand, double adaptive into rookie, facing red aggro once again. Let's see if we can beat this favorable matchup on the draw as well. Points off to a great start. And it looks like a play with fire for the adaptive. Okay, now we can go adaptive plus pack leader, or we could pack leader take out the Swiss spear. Probably want to get the ball rolling on the adaptive to start growing it, even though we wouldn't be able to block all that profitably. Yeah, maybe taking out Swiss spear makes more sense. And then next turn we can go adaptive rookie and grow adaptive. It's not like we would have been able to grow it up to a 3-3 instantly. I'm not opposed to eventually trading for etching, but we have to watch out for Monstrous Rage. Now, Squeeze going to be a 3-3. So, does attack past the pack leader. And we won't quite be able to take it out here. So... Adaptive into Rookie. And we'll play defense for now. All out attack. So we can try and double block Squee. That's bad if they have a spot removal spell. Can beat Monstrous Rage at least. Could also just block like so. And then... It's not quite as much of a blowout if they have a pump spell. Alright. Don't actually have a great turn lined up without a fourth land. So our opponent might be on empty. Maybe another squeen hand. Okay, 
the top deck to Witch Doctor Frenzy instead. Can play Ferox at least. Opponent may be deciding where to cast a burn spell. Or they're just gonna get back squeeze second main. Okay, so now we can play the warrior, grow Ferox, attack, and still take out Squee. Found Bloomkin. So Warrior definitely is going to block here if our opponent attacks, so we don't die to a 3 damage Lightning Strike. Although, they might just take out the Warrior itself. And then, yeah, opponent could still top deck a win here if they string together some burn spells. Alright, it is a Lightning Strike, so we're dead to another 3 damage effect. And Bloomkin, I'm just gonna play since disguising it would be a little too expensive. Can I afford to attack with the Ferox? If her opponent's gonna play with fire, they get to scry end of turn, put us to one. So they likely find another haste creature or burn spell anyway. So I think the attack is worth it. And then I should probably play the land out. Well, we're not dead yet. Found Beast Caller. So if I attack all out, opponent only has to jump with one of their creatures. Got a blocker. So, yeah, we'll see if they can top deck another Lightning Strike, pretty much. Monstrous Rage is one damage short. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, another nail biter here against Mono Red Aggro. So yeah, in conclusion, this Mono Green deck is not gonna blow your socks off, but it is a reasonable deck if you like this sort of playstyle. I think it's got a favorable matchup against Mono Red. The Boros deck I think is gonna beat Mono Green more often than not, and then Control can also be a pretty tough matchup. Although if you can kind of sequence your way around some sweepers, you can maybe still play a Ferox just in time to deal those last points, so it's not a totally lost cause. So is Mono Green playable as standard? I think the answer is sort of, so take that as you will. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.